Hello everyone, welcome to Dentamedia YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss about the difference between primary and permanent teeth. Let's get started. The deciduous and permanent dentitions have some differentiating features between them which make them unique. These differentiating features can be listed under the following headings. General features. Morphological differences present in the crown, root, and pulp anatomy. Histologic differences, general features, numbers, deciduous teeth. There are 20 deciduous teeth with 5 teeth in each quadrant, permanent teeth. There are 32 permanent teeth with 8 teeth in each quadrant, types of teeth, deciduous teeth. They consist of central incisor, lateral incisor, canine and first and second molars, permanent teeth. They consist of central incisor, lateral incisor, canine, first and second premolars and first, second and third molars, dental formula, size, deciduous teeth. The deciduous teeth are generally small when compared with their permanent counterpart, except in the case of deciduous molars which are larger when compared with their permanent counterpart, example. The premolas, permanent teeth. The permanent teeth are generally large when compared with their deciduous counterpart, except the premolas which are small when compared with their deciduous counterpart, example. The molars, color, deciduous teeth. They are white because the enamel is less mineralized and opaque, so it does not reflect the color of the underlying dentin, permanent teeth. They are yellowish-white or gray or brown because the enamel is more mineralized and translucent, so it reflects the color of the underlying dentin, placement in jaw, deciduous teeth. They are placed perpendicular in relation to the jaws, permanent teeth, they are placed oblique in relation to the jaws, eruption, deciduous teeth. Eruption begins at 6 months after birth and is completed by 30 months of age, permanent teeth, eruption of permanent teeth starts at 6 years after birth and is completed by 25 years of age, root formation, deciduous teeth. The roots of deciduous teeth are fully formed after 1 year of eruption of the particular tooth, permanent teeth, it takes about 3 years for the root to be completed in the permanent teeth, shedding, deciduous teeth. They start exfoliating from the oral cavity by around 6 years of age and continue up to 10 years of age as a result of physiologic resorption of the root, permanent teeth. They do not undergo shedding but can be lost due to any pathologic resorption, morphological differences, differences in crown morphology, shape, deciduous teeth. They are more bulbous. Permanent teeth. They are less bulbous. Dimensions, deciduous teeth. The crowns of primary teeth are wider mesiodistally in comparison with their crown length, permanent teeth. The length of the crown of permanent teeth is more when compared with their mesiodistal width, surface, deciduous teeth. In deciduous anterior teeth, the facial, labial, and buccal surface is flat above the cervical ridge up to the incisal surface. In the deciduous molars, the lingual slash palatal surfaces are also flat above the cervical ridge up to the occlusal surface, permanent teeth. In case of permanent teeth, the facial and lingual slash palatal surfaces are convex, mamelons, deciduous teeth. Mamelons are absent in the incisal surface of the deciduous incisors, permanent teeth. The permanent incisors have mamelons in their incisal surfaces, cingulum, deciduous teeth. In the lingual slash palatal surface, the cingulum is more prominent and occupies one third of the crown length, permanent teeth. The cingulum is not as prominent as in the deciduous teeth, cusps, deciduous teeth. The cusps are short, sharp, and pointed in deciduous molars but become flat due to wear and tear, permanent teeth. The cusps in permanent premolars and molars are less sharp when compared with the deciduous molars, occlusal surface, deciduous teeth, since the cusps are short and the fossae and ridges are less prominent, the deciduous molars have a shallow occlusal surface, permanent teeth. 
The permanent molars and premolas have a deeper occlusal surface because the cusps are long and the fossae and ridges are prominent, occlusal area, deciduous teeth. The buccal and lingual slash palatal surfaces of the deciduous molars converge more occlusally. As a result, the occlusal area or table appears narrow buccolingually, permanent teeth. The buccal and lingual slash palatal surfaces of the permanent premolas and molars also converge occlusally but not as much as seen in the deciduous molars. As a result, the occlusal area or table appears wider buccolingually, contact area, deciduous teeth. The crowns of primary teeth have a small contact area placed more gingivally, permanent teeth. The crowns of permanent teeth have a large contact area, and they are placed either in the middle third or at the junction of the middle and incisal third, cervical line, deciduous teeth, the cervical line is less curved, permanent teeth. The cervical line is more curved, cervical ridge, deciduous teeth. The cervical ridges at the cervical third of the crown are prominent in all deciduous teeth, especially on the labial surface of anterior teeth, and the buccal and mesial surfaces of the molars, permanent teeth. The cervical ridges are less pronounced in the crown of permanent teeth, cervical constrictions, deciduous teeth. The cervix of the tooth shows marked constriction between the crown and the root, making the crown appear more bulbous, permanent teeth. The cervical constriction is less pronounced in permanent teeth when compared with the deciduous teeth, differences in root morphology, length of root, deciduous teeth. The roots of the deciduous teeth are shorter and slender when compared with the permanent teeth, permanent teeth. The roots of the permanent teeth are long and strong when compared with the deciduous teeth, crown root ratio, deciduous teeth. The roots of the deciduous teeth are proportionally longer when compared with the crown size, permanent teeth. The roots of the permanent teeth are not as long as the crown size, inclination of root, deciduous teeth. There is a slight labial inclination of as much as 10 degrees seen in the apical third of the roots of the deciduous anterior teeth, permanent teeth. The roots of the permanent teeth do not show any labial inclination, furcation, deciduous teeth. The level of furcation of the root is near the cervix in deciduous molars, permanent teeth. The level of furcation of the root is about 3 or 4 mm from the cervix or is more apically placed, root trunk, deciduous teeth. Since the level of furcation is very close to the cervix, the root trunk is not distinct, permanent teeth. The root trunk is long and distinct as the level of furcation is not close to the cervix, root flare. Deciduous teeth, the roots of the deciduous molars flare beyond the mesiodistal and buccolingual outline of the crown to allow room slash space for development of the permanent tooth crown, permanent teeth. In case of permanent teeth, the roots do not flare and are well within the boundaries of the crown, apical foramen, deciduous teeth, the apical foramen is wide in deciduous teeth, permanent teeth. In case of permanent teeth, the apical foramen is narrow and constricted, differences in pulp morphology, pulp chamber, deciduous teeth. The pulp chambers are large when compared with the size of the crown, permanent teeth. The pulp chambers are relatively small when compared with the size of the crown, pulp horn, deciduous teeth. The pulp horns extend more incisally or occlusally, and they are placed close to the enamel, permanent teeth. The pulp horns are not placed at a high level as in deciduous teeth, pulp canal, deciduous teeth. The pulp canal is wider in comparison to the root width and is more tortuous, permanent teeth. The pulp canal is narrow in comparison to the root width, accessory pulp canals, deciduous teeth, in deciduous teeth, the accessory pulp canals are more in number and are situated mostly in the furcation area, permanent teeth. In case of permanent teeth, the accessory pulp canals are seen mostly in the apical region, histologic differences, enamel, deciduous teeth, the enamel is thin and is of uniform thickness covering the crown of the deciduous teeth, the enamel is less calcified and more permeable, in the cervical region, 
the enamel rods incline either incisally or occlusally or horizontally towards the enamel surface, permanent teeth. The enamel is thick and is of varying thickness, covering the crown of the permanent teeth. The enamel is more calcified and less permeable. In the cervical region, the enamel rods incline apically or cervically. Towards the enamel surface, dentin, deciduous teeth. The dentin is thin and is of variable thickness, with increased thickness near the occlusal fossae area, permanent teeth. The dentin is thick and is of uniform thickness, covering the crown of the permanent teeth, neonatal lines, deciduous teeth. The neonatal line is seen in all deciduous teeth, permanent teeth. The neonatal line is seen only in the permanent first molars because the first evidence of calcification of this tooth starts at birth, dentino-enamel junction, deciduous teeth. The dentino-enamel junction is usually scalloped in deciduous teeth, permanent teeth. The dentino-enamel junction is smooth in permanent teeth, cementum, deciduous teeth. The acellular and cellular cementum is relatively thin in deciduous teeth, permanent teeth. In permanent teeth, the cementum is relatively thick with the cellular cementum being thicker in the apical region of the root. Hope you liked our video. Please subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon to get latest updates. Thank you for watching.